Dear Heavenly Father, at this time, we are entrusting China into your mighty hands. We ask you for ushering in an era where more Chinese people turn to your embrace than in 5,000 years. We ask you to continue your work of salvation and revival in this land, and may hundreds of millions of souls be embraced by you. Guide the people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness to seek for the truth, and help those who are wandering to find a way, the truth and the life. May you pour down blessings and take control of this land. Dear Heavenly Father, we really want to thank you and praise you. Tens of thousands of people have come to Jesus, and you have established tens of thousands of churches for your disciples to gather. Nowadays, the churches are facing various demonic obstacles from the world, and human weaknesses and other hindrances. Lord, we especially ask you to help the pastors in China to be filled with Holy Spirit and the truth, in order for them to plant healthy churches across this nation. And Lord, we ask you to equip the churches in China with faith, love, hope, truth, holiness, and complement the church organizational structure, management, and pastoral care in every aspect. Not only that, we ask you to continue raising up more pastors and spiritual leaders in this nation. Lord, may the churches that you plan conform with the teachings of the Bible. We also pray for the government perspective on the churches. In the past 60 years, the Chinese government has not had a correct perception and understanding of the churches. Heavenly Father, churches are really a great gift and blessing to this land. And Lord, you raise the government to reward the virtuous and punish the wicked. You raise the church to light the way, lead the path, and comfort the hearts. Lord, you raise the churches to save souls and bring people out of evil into your holiness. Remove the incorrect perception and understanding from the government on the churches. We ask you to grant our government the wisdom, knowledge, and help from heaven to reward the virtuous and punish the wicked in order to please you. Lord, your gospel will be spread across this divine land, not only in suburban areas, but also in the city. Not only in the north, but also in the south. Not only in the coastal cities, but also in the mainland and in the western cities. The gospel will turn a new page for this generation in China and bless all the people in every city across this divine land. Bless the society, the nation, even the whole world by the revival of our churches. Help the churches in China to not only accept the mercies, but also to share the mercies. Not only to accept the gospel, but also to spread the gospel. Lord, we thank you for the foreign missionaries who have come to China to plant the gospel seed. But today, we pray that you will raise up more missionaries in China and send them to the world, especially to the places and the people who have not heard the gospel, and follow the example of prior missionaries. Maybe even at the cost of life, but Lord, your will for Chinese churches is for us to become wheat that produces many seeds in different places. So, Lord, we ask you to move the churches to oversee missions, to build churches into missionary churches. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, that we pray. Amen. Amen. China, North Korea. Other places in the、uh, Far East、uh, are places we are privileged to support missionaries. Now, in those places, we have to do it in ways that it's totally untraceable. So it would be hard for you to figure out who they are or what we're doing. Just know that we have found good people of integrity that are reliable, that are risking life and limb、uh, to spread the gospel, and we just get to be a part of what makes it possible for them to do that. Uh, today is our Global Mission Sunday. We do this once a year, and、um, I'm excited because this is the big picture. Next week we're going to have Vision Sunday. We're going to do a、uh, brunch afterwards. By the way, it's a brunch, not a potluck. We're actually supplying the food. You don't have to bring anything, so there's no reason not to stay.、Uh, we have.、Um, Some people that are very skilled at making egg omelet uh, uh, casseroles and those kinds of things. So we've got people that will be hard at work making all of that prepared for us, so that we can get together and just look at where are we going, who are we as a church. We'll have some time for interaction, all of that. But just so you understand, next week is the foundation that we will continue to lay, so that we can have a a family of neighborhood churches connecting people with God from Southeast Orlando to the world. 
So as much as next week is important, this week is why we're doing it. We're not just doing it just for us and just for our neighbors and just for those that need Jesus here. We are doing it so that we can become a part of a growing movement that just sends people around the world. Wouldn't you love to pray the way that woman was praying for her own country? I mean, wasn't that just, it's just like, there's such passion, there's such devotion. I, w- I would argue this, as we, as we look at our own worship, as we look at our own prayer life, as we look at the things we've been talking about as far as generosity over the last few weeks, if there's a missing ingredient, it's often mission. We don't pray the way we should pray because we've lost sight of mission. We don't worship God the way we should worship God because we've lost sight of his mission. So today's message is called mission-infused worship. Now, with that, you go, well, what's that infused? How many of you have ever been to a wedding reception? I was at one a week ago. And you had two choices of water. One was infused with pineapple, and the other one was infused with citrus. Now, back in the day, you had a little sugar to that, and we call it lemonade. But we don't do that anymore. Now we do infused water, right? So we know how that works. There's an inside canister, and, and you put all the fruit in there, and then it you know, infuses into the water. Well, what needs to infuse into our prayer life, into our worship, is mission. And if we're lacking motivation, maybe it's because we've lost sight of mission. One of the things I want to do around here to help keep it in the forefront of our thinking, in our family room, which will be the room that is most likely used for smaller gatherings and receptions, and there was a, uh, I don't know if it was a bridal shower or a baby shower last night. I think it's a baby shower. That was in there last night running till late because that's who we are. Uh, But in that room, there's right now one picture on the wall, and it's a picture of Orlando, right? from Lake Eola, Skyline View. Um, All of these other pictures, along with a plaque that indicates what nation they're from, will be there to remind us of where we're reaching out into the world. Whether it's Haiti or East Asia or Indonesia or Costa Rica, New Orleans uh, or Romania. And that's not everything, that's just some. And we're gonna talk about some of those today. If you're taking notes, this is the points. Pray, give, go. Does that sound familiar? We have t-shirts that say that. We have a new t-shirt that says that. If you talk to Andrew, maybe he can, you know, find you a t-shirt. But that's that's the foundation of our whole framework for doing global missions. We pray first, and that's just kind of a part of our DNA. But you pray, and then you give towards something, and then you, you go if you possibly can. Now, how many here would love to go somewhere else in the world and share Jesus with somebody? Show of hands, right here. Now, of those that just raised their hands, Part of the problem is, well, I can't really afford to do that, right? Well, that's where the giving of all of us comes in. If we all chip in and make this possible, those who have the margin this year to go will be able to go. And next year, maybe it's your turn. The bottom line is you need the margin to be able to leave and be gone for a while, but you also need the resources. So we want to pray, we want to give, we want to go. We're right now in the middle of a 99-day prayer challenge, and the results so far look like this. There are 51 people from Vista, as of last night, that are praying. And now they're praying for their neighbors, and that means that there are over 4,000 households that have been adopted. And if you figure there's about three people in each household, that's about 12,000 people. And we've already prayed for almost 1,500 of those people, and we're just getting started. Now, how many think that's really good, that we're praying for 4,000 households? I think that's amazing. But what I would love for it to be is twice that. I learned something a year ago. A year ago, I learned I lost about 30 pounds, right? Was it easy? No, it wasn't easy. Did I have to do stuff? Yeah. Did I have to learn a whole bunch of new stuff? Really really not. I learned a couple new things. One of the things I learned is if I eat seafood for dinner instead of chicken or beef, I I lose weight. So there's a little, little tip for you. I'm trying to lose a couple pounds. Well, just shift your seafood to later in the day and eat your heavier meats at lunch. But I would argue that almost everybody that I was talking, they're talking to me, they say, hey, I see you're losing weight. What are you doing? Now, why did they say that? Because they want to lose a few pounds too, right? So how do you do that? And I would tell them, they say, oh yeah, I already do that. Well, then why are you asking? Because if you do certain things, you will lose weight. The problem is we're not as intentional as we want to be, right? We know the right answers. And maybe you eat seafood for dinner, but it was that brownie at lunch that's really kind of messing you over. 
You know, there, there's other things. And, and the reason we do those whole things, is, well, I'll just make a little, con- I'm not saying this is you, this is me. I'll do, it. okay, the month of May. Do you know what happens in May? Graduations. And you know what happens with graduations? Many parties. And you know what they have at those parties? Every possible combination of sweet that you can imagine. So I'm thinking, well, I'll just a little here, and a little here, and a little here, and a little here. So I gained about 10 pounds in May, right? So I've mm, been working all summer just to get that back off again, right? The bottom line is this. It's not that we don't know what to do. It's not that we don't know to pray. I'm just saying we're not as intentional as we should be. Part of what makes a diet successful is if you make it tangible and you make some handles on what it is you're trying to do, and then you pay attention to what you're doing. You actually track it. Last week, we had Nancy Whitmire share her prayer journal that she uses. That's not some program. That's just something that she does. The point is, what are you doing to be intentional and to actually pay attention to what it is that you're doing or not doing? In the end, as a praying church, if we know that we've been called on mission, we also know that if this is not about us. And if we're not praying, this is not going to be successful. So you have in your bulletin this morning a prayer response card. Well, a a, a pray, give, go response card. The first part is prayer. If you would like more intentional information, like to pray for our missionaries, there is a missionary prayer request email list that you can check that and you'll go on to that list. If you specifically want to pray for the Masan project, which, and I'll just say this now, Masan is not the actual name of these people. This is, again, uh, I'll just be general, an East Asian people group that is only, well, less than 1% Christian. And the vast majority of them follow a religion that's not real friendly toward us. And they're very nominal at that. So the bottom line, these are a lot of people that need God and they need God badly, right? So if you want to give toward or pray toward what's happening with the Masan people, you can get on that list as well. Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. What does it take to have a new song? Okay, let's just, let's just get this out there. Okay, who wrote the Psalm, Psalm 96? David. What did David do? He wrote a bazillion songs. You're going, I can't sing a new song because one, I can't sing, and two, I don't write songs. So this this verse obviously isn't for me. Okay, put it through the filter of this is David. So the way he communicated with God intimately was through music. That may not be the way you communicate, but you still use your words. So the point is to have a new song, you have to have something new that's happened. The reason we do real stories is because God's always doing something. And it's great to tell those stories out loud right? So sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. So this isn't all skate. This isn't even just people that are following Jesus. God wants everybody to talk about the good stuff that he's doing. And for them to do that, what do they need to do? They need to meet him, which is what we're here to talk about today. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. That means to speak well of him. Speak well of God. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Now, that says one of two things. Either every day, day to day, we should speak of his salvation, or we should talk about his salvation that happens day to day. Either way, it's a good translation. It's a good way to look at it. We need to be doing this constantly. Declare his glory among the nations. So what do you have to do if you're going to declare his glory among the nations? You have to be among the nations, right? So in the end, Pray, Give, Go is all about some of us having an opportunity to go and actually be face-to-face with people and share with people personally and um, in real time. Declare his marvelous works among all the peoples. So just to practice, I think it's good to practice. We could just talk about this this morning, but it would be better to do it. In our turn and share time this morning, I just want you to turn to whoever's kind of sitting around you. And if you need to kind of scoot down an aisle or whatever to get close to somebody, but just somebody in your little group of people, it could be four, five, six people if you want. Somebody share about something good that God has done. Whether it was 100 years ago, well, you're not that old. Whether it was 30 years ago or yesterday, talk about something good that God has done in your life personally. Ready, go. Give you about a minute. (laughs) Psalm 96, verse 4. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared, feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are worthless idols. Why, why do we declare God's wonderful works? 
because there's a whole bunch of people worshiping stuff that's not God. They're worshiping the creation instead of the creator. And they're making up things that are God to them, when in reality there is a God and he loves them and wants a relationship with them. For all the gods of the people are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. So when you are in the presence of God, you are in the presence of strength. When you're in the presence of God, you're in the presence of beauty. And God wants to, he created us to have a relationship with him. I mean, why is it bad that people run after other things that they call gods? Because one, it's not real. And two, they're missing out on the purpose that they were created for. That they would experience the living God, not just now, but through all eternity. As John sang in the song, it's better to have one day with God than a thousand without him. So we pray, but we pray, but we don't stop there. We pray, and then we also find ways to give. And there's all, we're in a series on generosity called Give, you know, undeniable generosity. It's, it's who we are. It's what we've been created for. But as we give, well, listen to Psalm uh, 96, verse 7. It says, ascribe to the Lord. Now, what does it mean to ascribe? You guys are totally cheating because it says give on the thing. Okay, but, but what are you giving? When you ascribe something to the Lord, what are you giving him? Credit. credit. Very good. Credit. You're giving God credit for what he did. You're not giving him credit for something that you did and, okay, he can have the credit. No. This is what God is doing and you're just giving him what is due him. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the people, ascribe to the Lord the glory and strength Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Now, the question is, how do you do that? Well, obviously, verbally you do it, but it's not just verbal. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Now, in the Old Testament system, there's all kinds of offerings, right? All kinds of sacrifices. And we think, well, that's Old Testament. Now that we're in Jesus, we don't have to sacrifice anything. We don't have to bring offerings. We're done with that kind of stuff. It's like, no, 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 no. This is how you ascribe glory to God's name is that you modify your life and your comfort and your situation for his purposes. And that's what brings glory to his name. So the question is, is what is it that we're to give? Now, in the response card under give, the lion's share, if you, if you don't mark anything else, your giving will go to help other people go on these trips. In a moment, we're going to have a few people come up here and talk about some of the different trips that we have or different mission opportunities we have. And you say, well, I, I can't do that right now, but you could give toward other people doing it. If you check that and you begin to give in that direction, it will go to help other people go. Now, in addition to that, though, there's a couple things that I think you just need to be aware of that are also options. The first is Andrew went to Nushvalu last spring. Do you remember when he went and Tony came and they shared and they talked about this church in Nushvalu? They are reaching the Roma gypsies who are very much outcasts in their culture, right? And as they are reaching these people, they need a ministry base to work from. So they had this small, modest little church, and there's a picture of Andrew standing out front with, with a lot of the pastors and students that are being trained there. Well, if you look at now the back of the building, the walls are up and the roof is up, and they're moving forward with expanding the worship space, the training space, the kitchen, because Christians eat food, which is why we need diets, but that's another story. But in the end, we are building a ministry hub that ministers to many communities from this one location. This is no different than what we're doing here. Our ministry hub houses what we do with Vista. It houses what we do with the well. And it also houses right now what we're doing in Nona. Now, next week, if you're here for Vision Sunday, you'll hear about some of the things that God is doing in Nona that are just absolutely wonderful. But it's going to increase our ability to, to be a hub, not just here, but in the Nona area. So the bottom line is, um, what we do, okay, right now is, is part of our offering for the fall. We're going to finish off the building so that we're done, done with, you know, the things around here that need to be done. And for some of you, it's just like, you know, really, what difference does it make? This is close as good enough. Let's just move on, Right. Well, it's just not in me to do that because I know where we're going and I know that you need to clean up your loose ends along the way, 
right? Same thing is true at home. Somebody asked me this morning, so how is your new house? We moved in there not quite a year ago. We moved in uh, November last year, and we knew when we moved in, we'd have a lot of projects to do, right? Are we done? No, but we have a wedding coming in January. There's a hard stop on this. We want to get as many of those projects done as we can, but it's not just that. We didn't move across the street from church because we like, you know, walking to work. Well, actually, we do like walking to work. We'd move there because we want people to come over and hang out with us, right? And people said to me, well, do you realize what you're doing? If you move right across the street from church, people will be at your house all the time. And I'm going, yeah. What's, what's, what's the hard part in that? Well, the hard part was we used to have a back porch that was like this big. I mean, the builder just must have run out of concrete and decided that the back porch could only be like big enough for two people to stand there. Now, if it was just Deb and I, we probably could make that back porch work. But a week ago, I took a week off just to do this. And this is the new um, back porch patio area now. You like that? See, there's room for you to come sit at the table, sip a little infused water. It'd be great. Okay. <laughs> But we have this wonderful 100-year-old tree that's just fun to stare at. You just sit there and go, that's really amazing. God, you did a cool thing 100 years ago, and it's still here. So in the end, why do we do that? Can I be honest? I'm tired. I'm tired of working on that house. I'm tired of working on this house. Yesterday, we had a wonderful group of people. Poor Terry. Terry Van Dyke was going to kind of head up the, the work day yesterday and kind of give me a break, right? It's going to be great. Okay, go for it, Terry. And then he fell and broke a rib. Not here, but he fell and broke a rib. Okay, so he's out of the mix. So I came yesterday kind of going, okay, fine, I'll do it again. And Dan was there faithfully as almost every time Dan is there. And the bottom line is we left about two yesterday, right? I mean, we're supposed to be done at noon, but we just kind of got going. And, and a road, if you're in the new lobby, notice the shades. You're no longer blown out by the sun coming in. Very nice little workday stuff. I was, I was humbled by how many people were here. And I'm having to come up with projects. I had to go home and get my list. My, my grandson calls it a whist. So I went home and got the whist. And, you know, we, we just cranked out a bunch of stuff. Why do we do that? Why does Dan come once a month on a Saturday and put it out there? Is so that we can have an environment here that multiplies ministry. That is why we do this. It's what we're doing in Nushvalu. And it is so cool that by the time they go this summer, I'm hoping it's done or mostly done, and they'll get to celebrate what's going on there. Another project is the Masan project. Yes, we funded the book of Acts. We've got some stories um, here that we'll sh share in a second as far as some of the result of that. But you can continue to give to the Masan project because it's not done. There's other books they want to translate. Uh, there's oral stories that they want to translate for those that aren't readers so that they can learn how to share these gospel stories uh, well. But less than 1% of 5 million people know Jesus. And we want to help that less than 1% just see the kingdom of God explode and expand. So here's an update real quick. They do a thing called community testing, when they've, and they're doing this right now with Acts. Uh, there's one story in the book of Acts where uh, this lady, she's just a lady from the community. She's not a Jesus follower. She's not a Christian. But they just want people to come in and just read it. <laughs> How brilliant is this? Could you come in and just read this? It's, it's the Bible. You know, um, they call it the Angel in their, you know, Anyway, in their religion, could you come and read this and tell us if it makes sense to you? You could do this with your neighbors. Hey, read the Bible and tell me if it makes sense to you. <laughs> anyway, so they did that, and this woman goes, and it was, it was in the book of Acts, and it was talking about the strength of God. And she was just going, I know that this is true. She's a single mom, you know, barely able to make ends meet. She says, but when things are hard, she says, I'm a sinful person, but when I... Turned to God. He is there and he is my strength. And, and she just so resonated with the word of God. It's just, just pretty cool. They have a radio station that has been playing the gospel of Luke, but they broke it up in little portions so that, you know, they like wouldn't run out. So the thing is they ran out. So they were kind of hoping for the book of Acts, but it's not quite done yet. So they went back and they're looping again back through, through Luke. And as soon as Acts is done, then it'll become a part of the radio uh, broadcast. There was one 80-year-old woman who, listening to the gospel of Luke on the radio, went over to the radio and just held it. She just hugged her radio. And she said, this is the right path. 
This, this, is, this is what we need, right? So they started visiting her, and then there came that day when they went and visited her, and she was gone. But she left this world knowing Jesus and having heard, you know, in time. There are 38 gospel oral stories that are being translated right now. So if you give to the Masson Project, it'll go to help with that. And then also, Christmas last year was just amazing because they could tell the Christmas story in their own heart language. And they had four big gatherings of people to do that. And I'm sure it'll be even more this year. But the Masson Project continues on and we continue to invest in that. 2 Corinthians 8, 4, in the second week of our generosity series, we talked about the Corinthians and how Paul was talking about their uh, northern neighbors, the Macedonians, and how much they were giving. And it said, they begged earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. This is the way when we pray, give, and go, we start our giving by giving to God. And then say, now God, how do you want me to give to others? And that's exactly what we've been doing and uh, what we will continue to do. And then finally, we need to go. In the prayer response card, undergo, there are five trip options for this coming year. And if the people that are here to represent those options would come forward, I'm looking for them. Here we go. One, two, three, four. There we go. We have five trips and Damien's going to represent two of them since they're kind of his area. I'm going to start from kind of easiest to more challenging. Um, My wife says, do you always make sound effects or do you just do that when I'm around? I just make sound effects. I'm a boy. That's what we do. Here, I'll let you hold that while I'm talking. I'm going to start with Robin because Robin's mission trip is just going to the airport at OIA and picking up a French student, bringing them home for a couple weeks and loving on them in Jesus' name. Okay, so that's the shortest trip, right? And then we have UCF and the Bridges Ministry at UCF. And UCF's a little farther, depending on where you live, than OIA, but not much. But that's nice because it's an ongoing relationship with our international students at Bridges. And then Damien will talk about our youth trips. And then Christina will talk about our trip to Romania. So... Robin. All right. um, so yes, so I work with a company called uh, Horizon de Monde, which is out of France. I've been working with them for 20 years. I know that Vista, I believe, has been a part of this program for I, close to 10 years now, I think. Um, so we've been having families stepping up. And, and really what we need is just families that are willing to open up their hearts, to open up their homes to these kids and 80 to 90 percent of the kids that come have never stepped foot into a church other than possibly a Christmas mass. Um, They're told actually by their parents that um, religion is not important until you're older. Uh, So that it's really not even on their radar at all. But they're really hungry for something and when you get to know these kids you realize that they're searching for something and we want to be that something that they can kind of hold on to to get a, a glimpse Uh, of Christ in their life. Um, They have absolutely no idea. They don't know what to expect. Some of them think we're a cult. When they hear that they're going to be staying with a church family, they don't really know what to do with that. They get here, and when they leave on a Sunday morning, they're like, oh my goodness, I had no idea. If church was like this in France, I would go every single week. Um, we've had so many stories I could tell. I could literally take the whole time, which Van and I mentioned at the last service. Um, so many opportunities that kids have had seeds planted and watered. Kids have made decisions. Um, I've had whole families that are now attending church in France where they were not attending church at all, but because their son or daughter stayed in one of our host families, made that connection. The entire family is now attending church in France. So, I mean, it may seem small. Eight days is not a long time. The three-week program is not a long time. But trust me, God is working every moment from the time they get off that plane until they go back. And it, it can be a little odd, uncomfortable to have a strange person in your house for a week, three weeks. Um, but, you know, I just encourage you to kind of take that step, be uncomfortable a little bit, 
because these kids are so excited to come. They are so excited to meet you. And they get an opportunity to spend time in a Christian family and to see that it's not the boring thing they think it is. It's not just all of the, you know, you have to go into the priest and confess your sins and this, you know, they get a chance to see what it's really like to have a personal relationship. And trust me, it goes leaps and bounds into their life. When the hurricanes came a few weeks ago, I had students that actually contacted me and said, my family is praying for you. And I mean, that's just something these kids would have never said. And I had the boy that stayed with me this past August was in a terrible accident, almost died. While he was here, he told me he had really no belief in God, didn't really know about the whole church thing, but he would come with me um, while he was here. He contacted me and asked for a prayer, and his family asked me for prayer. And, and again, these are things that would have never happened had that student not had the opportunity to get to know the families at Vista and to see our love for, for Christ. So I encourage you to check that box on your list um, just to get some more information on hosting a student. In February, I do have 78 students coming for eight days, so I'm really going to need a lot of families to step up and, and open their homes. Thanks. For all of these opportunities, you think, well, this is a short-term thing, and Bridges is a little bit longer because you can do it while the student's here. And even going on a mission trip, you're there just for you know a week or two. But the bottom line is you start relationships that last a lifetime. And I know with our French students, I don't know, we've got six or eight of them now that we've had at our home. Facebook is great. We, we are in contact with almost all of them on an ongoing basis. And it really is, you've just opened up a door that you get to use many, many, many times before you're done. So, Ja. Okay, my name is Ja. I am an uh, international student from Myanmar. I went to UCF and I graduated last year. Um, so I, so I just want to talk a little bit about Bridges at UCF. So Bridges is a, is a Christian organization that ministers to international students. So UCF has a lot of international students from all around the world. And if you check out our table in the lobby, we have a map with um, the dots with the places uh, that international students are from. That, that map is just from this semester. And you can just see that the dots are It's all a lot of the, dots. Yeah, you need yeah. to go see <laughs> yeah. it. It's around the, the world map. And... And well, I'm from Myanmar, and I got involved with Bridges when I came to UCF. And I already, I already was a Christian, but I didn't have a relationship with God. I was just, you know, a Christian by name. Um, so after I got involved with Bridges, I went to like Bible studies, and I really understood um, like the mission and you know the Great Commission and. Um, the importance of sharing the gospel with these international students. And then later I became a student leader and now I graduated. Um, and what I would encourage you to do is just to be friends with them. Like it would be uh, weird at first, like what I'm saying is uh, a long term relationship. You know, at, when Bridges first contacted me, it's kind of weird. Like one of the staff, um, Jan, she, uh, when she first approached me, or you know, like, oh, Ja. Do you want to hang out or let's go to lunch? Or, you know, I, I thought it was really weird that this lady, you know, she's older. She has, we have nothing in common. That, but she's always asking me for, like, like, to hang out. And, like, she's always willing to help. And, you know, I need a driver license or I need to go shopping or, you know, just all these, like, these little daily things. Like, she's willing to help and she's willing to answer my questions because, like, I don't know about America, you know. Um, I mean, it was weird because, um, you know, I didn't understand the the mission. It's just like, what does she want? What is she trying to sell? You know, like, it's, but it it does take time. And yet now Jen has become like one of my best friends in in the U.S. And now I'm going back to Myanmar soon. And you know, it's just it's really great to see their relationship relationship um, grow. And many of the international students who come to the U.S. Uh, they go to school. They live in dorm. They might have other uh, other fellow students from the same country, but many of the students, like I think 70%, they have never set their foot in an American home, American home, or at their time in a, in the U.S. Like they would stay here, they would come here, go to school, and then go back to their country without even like experiencing American culture. And especially you know when they first come here, it's a it's a lot of difficulties. They don't know how to shop. They don't know how to go to. Uh, stores and you know a lot of different things so 
it's just nice to have a friend and and it's just re really rewarding to gain that friendship for like both sides. So yes, yeah, so we will have we have our table outside, so please come check it out after. Thank you. Uh, so I have two trips to tell you about, and I'll tell you about uh, NOLA, New Orleans, Louisiana. And so uh, we take seventh or eighth grade through uh, seniors uh, to New Orleans. We have made some exceptions for some seventh graders, but the trip is kind of weighty. Um, the the church that we uh, we sleep at and and, and we're our, like our location is a block away from Bourbon Street. If you know anything about New Orleans, and so any any time we're going anywhere, it's like, hey, if we're crossing Bourbon Street, just like just go, just just keep walking, because uh, Bourbon Street is tough, especially when you're walking there uh, through there with students, but. The church primarily, uh, the pastor we work with, his name is, is, is Tom Bilderback. And with him, he's committed uh, to serving uh, those on the fringes, specifically the homeless. And his church is primarily made up of the homeless. And one of the really cool things that we get to do there is we do a lot of different projects for different people in, in the city. But one of the really cool things is called make a lunch, take a lunch. And so uh, each student makes two lunches, one for themselves and one for someone else. And they put it in a paper bag and we walk uh, into the square uh, and we find someone who doesn't have lunch. And we say, hey, uh, could we sit with you uh, and, and share lunch? You, I have this, I have an extra lunch, I have lunch for myself. And, uh, and usually they say, yeah, I want lunch, right? Who doesn't want lunch? And so we sit down with them, we have conversations, and we say, hey, how'd you get here? Like, are you from New Orleans? Uh, what's, what, what, do you do? Like, what are you up to? Like, tell me about your life a little bit. And they share all types of stories. Uh, I think I had a guy last time just tell me about physics for like 20 minutes. I don't, I, uh, but we get to just share, and, and it's really cool, because these, these students, so we go in groups, and these students ask questions, and they learn how to ask questions to a complete stranger. And then when they ask them questions, when, when, the, when the person asks them questions about why are you here, it's like, isn't this your spring break? It's like, yeah, it's my spring break. Well, what are you doing here? Well, funny you asked me. Uh, Jesus. And, yeah. and they get to share a little bit about um, what God has done in their life. So that's a really cool experience. Um, can, you, can, I, can I have a hoot and holler for those of you who went to New Orleans? Who? Yes. So we have a little crew back there. Um, and then Costa Rica is the other trip I want to tell you about. It, last year was the first time that I went. And we took a group, about 10 of us, and we worked with um, a missionary. His name is Lamar and, and his family. Uh, and Lamar is really awesome. They're doing a lot of ministry in a couple different churches there. And a lot of the bulk of our ministry was uh, going into the schools, so going to different schools. And we get to teach them English uh, because there are a bunch of Spanish speakers teach, and they need to learn English. And so uh, just for those of you who are interested, this is a college and young adult, uh, graduating seniors of, you know, for the, those of you who are graduating seniors, and uh, college and young adults, uh, we went there. And one of the intimidating, about, intimidating things about this trip is uh, maybe you don't know Spanish. Well, when we walk into the classrooms, uh, Lamar told us, don't you dare speak Spanish. Was, okay. Um, because they need to learn English. And so we get to share, uh, share stories and ask them questions and teach them English and share the gospel. Well, we have one of the missionaries share the gospel in Spanish, and then we, um, and then we process with them uh, kind of some of those things. And then outside of the classroom, we get to talk to them and practice our Spanish, which they love. And we really saw a good response, uh, being able to put on a skit for them and uh, what Jesus has done for them. And we did a soccer outreach. Uh, and I'll just say this really quick. Um, for me, one of the significant parts of our trip last year was I had the opportunity to share my story at a church there and uh, just my story about how God has transformed my life. And when I shared that, uh, afterwards, I had a student come up to me and he said, hey, I'm, I'm traveling a few hours to, to talk at a church and I was wondering if I could use your story. I was like, what? You want to use my story? Like, yeah. Like, can, can I use, absolutely, you can use my story. Don't even ask permission. Um, use my story and, and being able to encourage uh, those that are there and share Jesus with those that are there is a really incredible time. So um, that's for about 10 days that we go there in Costa Rica, college and young adult. And if you're wondering, am I a young adult? Yeah, just come talk to me. We'll go work it out, you know? So. <laughs> so.
So I'm representing Andrew Axum, um, our missions director. Um, he will be leading our trip to Romania next year in July. We have more information. You can stop by and see me uh, later on. Um, Tony Calico started this ministry when Romania pretty much opened up to the West, and he's been there. He's been well established. He is one of our missionaries that we support. Um, and he serves the Roma Gypsy people. Um, these families, um, there is very much persecution going on for these families. They're not thought of very much. They're in uh, severe poverty. Their homes are shanties. There is maybe a water pump nearby. Um, and these children uh, are not thought of it, it, it from a value perspective. When they go to church or when they go to school, teachers will spend more time with the Romanian children versus the Roma children. So these kids will drop out. They're not getting the attention that they need. Um, they'll drop out, so it kind of repeats the cycle, and, and poverty is what they know. Um, our missions that we're going there, uh, summertime is just to uh, be there, do vi vacation Bible school. Um, mm -hmm. There have been some interest in maybe doing something a little bit more than that. Uh, but Tony's uh, mission is planting churches. Uh, one of the moving experiences I had four years ago was just simply worshiping God. There's no church. We're underneath a tree. Someone's got an accordion, someone's got a, a guitar, and just being able to experience uh, with other Christians and showing love, doing face painting, playing soccer, um, all of these things is just taking some time. Um, I will tell you that it is an easy trip once you get on the ground there. Um, it is for ages of all types, and um, if you want to know more, I would love to share about that. I know Andrew would love to do that, and um, it is a worthwhile uh, ministry, so thank you. Amen. Let's give them all a hand. Well, when I was born, it was the 50s, and people were weird in the 50s. It continued on somewhat into the 60s, so I, I remember that part probably better. But after World War II, there was a great season of prosperity, and people took their money and bought really nice homes and furniture and then they covered it in plastic. Isn't that weird? They covered their nice furniture in plastic, and then you weren't still allowed to sit on it. You just looked at it from a distance, this really nice plastic-covered furniture. Okay. We're helping Nushfalu create a ministry center, not so we can cover the furniture in plastic, but so that they have a base to go out and do ministry. We reach out to French students. We reach out to UCF students. We reach out around the world. We reach out in Haiti and other places as well. Not to create some antiseptic little bubble. Just to be clear, when we finish this facility here, there will be no plastic on anything. It will get worn out and replaced. But that's what God has called us to do, to be people that are on mission exhausting ourselves and exhausting our resources for the sake of his kingdom. Psalm 96, verse 9. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say, among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad. It says let several times here. What does it mean to let something happen? It means you're not making it happen. You're just not getting in the way. You're letting it happen. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the fields exalt and everything in it. You can just see David as a shepherd out in the pasture looking at the nature around him. Not a lot of people, just a bunch of sheep, but just seeing that even God's creation exalts him. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Before the Lord he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. There is a hard stop to all of this. For all we know, life just goes on and goes on and goes on. But that's not what the Bible tells us. There's going to come a day where Jesus returns and this part of eternity is done. And we move into an existence in the presence of God. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. We serve a good God who loves us so much that he sent his only son to make it possible for all of us to be children of God. 
Our call is not just to our neighbors, but it is to our neighbors. Not just to Orlando, but it is to Orlando. And not just to the United States, but to the world. This is just our mission center. Southeast Orlando is our base. And it's going to be connecting people with God from Southeast Orlando to the world. Let's all stand for prayer. Lord God, we thank you that in Jesus we have life, and that life isn't just for us, but for others. You are to be declared among us, but not just us. You are to be declared among the world, all the peoples of the world. So Lord God, for this season of time where we're looking at our global impact, I pray that all of us would pray, that we would give, and that we would go. That, Lord God, we would be intentional about the life that you've called us to live, and we would live it well in you. Speak to us in ways that we can hear and understand. Help us to know how we are to respond this year. And may we do it with great generosity, mission generosity. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.